Thomas Mulready from CoolCleveland.com, and we're here today in the Warehouse District, and we're here with Subod Chandra. Thanks so much for meeting with us today. Thank you, Tom. You are the former law director of the city of Cleveland. Right. And now you have your own law firm. Correct. Chandra Law Firm. Uh, we are talking today about judgeforyourself.com, the, right. the number four. This is a site that, I mean, talk about it. It's been around for now uh, almost eight, nine years, right? Right. Right. Well, the judgeforyourself.com is a project of four cooperating bar associations in Cuyahoga County. The Cleveland Metropolitan Bar Association, which has about 5,000 members. The Norman S. Minor Bar Association, which is a predominantly African-American bar association. The High Cuyahoga County Criminal Defense Lawyers, and then also the Ohio Women's Bar Association. And they work together to rate judicial candidates to help inform the public about how judges are performing. So this is really a nonpartisan grouping? Yes. of uh, folks that rank and rate judicial candidates. Right, and the, the candidates are rated based on professional competence, judicial temperament, which basically just means fairness, uh, integrity, and work ethic. So um, they're normally doing these rankings and ratings. What you've done with Judge for Yourself is sort of pull them all together in a, in a cooperative effort. Is that right? That's and, correct. And standardized That's correct. It ratings. used to be that the bar associations would have individual meetings and then rate the candidates separately, but they came together in a coalition to have bigger bang for the buck and make sure the public knows what they're doing before they vote for judge. I want to make sure people understand that this is nonpartisan, that there's nobody uh, behind there's no big money behind it. Where do you get the money to even put up your website and do all the things you need to do? Individual donations from lawyers participating as well as law firms for the most part. Why did you feel this was necessary in, in this region? It's, is it mainly Cuyahoga County that you're, that you're covering? Yeah, we just rate the candidates that appear on the Cuyahoga County ballot. So that would include the Ohio Supreme Court, but the 8th District Court of Appeals, Common Pleas Court, and all the municipal courts. Why did you feel something like this uh, had to happen? I mean, it's been very confusing in this town with judges because we're electing so many judges. And there's a name game that happens, right? right. You've got your Gallagher's, you've got your Russo's, you've got your names in this town, especially if they're Irish, that are getting elected and re-elected, and, and it has right. nothing to do with their competence. Right, well, I'll, I'll start with my own example. When I first moved to Cuyahoga County about 13 years ago, there would be a scene of my wife, who's also a lawyer, and I standing at adjacent polling booths, and I would say, honey, is this the smart Russo or the dumb Russo? Is this, <laughs> is this the mean Gallagher or the nice Gallagher? Yeah. And, you know, and, and we were never quite sure, even though we're practicing lawyers. So imagine what it's like for the rest of the public, That's including right. cool Cleveland readers. You don't quite know whether the person you're voting for is really a good judge or not. And so what we do is gather information from all the lawyers who actually appear in front of these folks on behalf of clients, rich and poor, individual and corporate, and let you know, let you the public know exactly how these folks are performing. Do you do interviews with these, uh, with these candidates at all yourselves? It's a very rigorous process that we've modeled after the American Bar Association and the Senate Judiciary Committee. We have a really detailed questionnaire that delves into every aspect of their professional and personal backgrounds. We do detailed interviews with the candidates. We interview lots of lawyers who've come into contact with these judicial candidates. So not just the candidates, but you're talking about people, the lawyers who have dealt with them, right. who, have, who have tried cases before these, these lawyers, and you get their opinions as well. Well, right. And in fact, the Cleveland Metropolitan Bar Association has about 5,000 members, and we send out a poll to all of the members to get their thoughts on how these candidates rank on our criteria. Wow. So you're putting out literally thousands of questionnaires to rank and rate these judges. What what have you found? I mean, you, you've been doing this now for a number of years. Right. What, what's, uh, what's the learning takeaway? Are you, are you finding that this is a very counterintuitive uh, results that you get? In other words, wow, I would have thought this, this guy or a gal was good, but it turns out the ranking is really not so good. Thomas, what we've learned and what every cool Cl Cleveland leader, reader needs to know, that is if you don't go to www.judgeforyourself.com, that's with the number four, right. and look at the rankings before you vote, and if you just play the name game, justice in Cuyahoga County can lose. I mean, look, for example, at this primary, the May 4th primary. Yes. There are 21 candidates running in contested races in the Democratic primary. Of those 21 candidates, seven of them, including some very familiar ballot names, including at least one incumbent judge with a familiar ballot name, are rated not recommended this by is, the Bar Association. This is your lowest ranking. Not the, the, recommended. Not is, recommended. Not is, considered fit for judicial office. Whereas seven of them, of the 21, are considered excellent or good. That means if you went in and just voted randomly, 
that you would have a two-thirds chance of picking somebody either mediocre or not fit for the bench. It's important that you know what you're doing before you vote for judicial candidates. This particular election, May 4, 2010, is especially critical because of the number of people that you have that are on the ballot that are not recommended. Yes, a third of the candidates running in contested races, a third of the 21 candidates, are not recommended. That is unbelievable. Tell me what you have to do short of being a, a convicted felon, you probably wouldn't even be eligible, but what, what do you have to do to get a not recommended rating? Well, as I said earlier, our criteria are professional competence, integrity, work ethic, and judicial temperament, so fairness. What does that mean? I mean, tell me, and, and tell me so, some specific, as much as you can, well, about some of these candidates that have not cut the mustard. What is it specifically about the, the cases they've tried? They're, they're, when you say temperament, what does that mean? The well, way here's, they act in front of let, a let, let me give you some sort of general examples. There are some judges, for example, where if a case winds up in their courtroom, it will sit on the docket for years. It won't move along. There won't be timely ruling on motions. And justice delayed is justice denied. And so as a practicing lawyer, I and many of my colleagues, and the judges are aware of this, sometimes we have to look our client in the eye when a particular judge is drawn and say to them, look, this judge may not know the law. Sometimes you have to say this judge unfortunately knocks off at 3 o'clock and isn't going to rule on uh, your motions. Um, you're not going to see justice for a long time. Or, you know, this judge has too cozy a relationship with the other side. Uh, this judge is unfair, is mean, you know, sides for one side or the other. Now, we have some excellent judges in Cuyahoga County, but we have some who aren't. And so that's the noble service that judgeforyourself.com performs. So this stuff we see on TV is, is actually pretty true. We've got really bad, corrupt judges. We need to know about it. Right. Judge for the number four yourself .com. Right. Thank you so much. You know, Thomas, if I could add one other Please thing. Do. I think it's important. Uh, I, I want to mention some of the races that are providing some of the greatest contrasts. Uh, in this particular season of the 21 contested candidates that I was telling you about, there are some races that people need to pay particular attention to. In the domestic relations court, which has drawn a lot of negative publicity, you know, in the Plain Dealer and the Supreme Court put out a, a report saying it was a terribly inefficient place, uh, there's a race in which there's a, there are candidates who are not recommended and there's an uh, incumbent judge who was just appointed by Governor Strickland, Rosemary Gradina Gold, who was rated excellent by all four bar associations. That is a very strong, high contrast race. Clear cut uh, choice there. And, and again, we don't, we're not telling people how to vote, but we're giving people our ratings and we're hoping that informed voters will then make the necessary inquiries and vote accordingly. Um, we also have in the common pleas court race, we have an incumbent judge, Bridget McCafferty, who was rated not recommended across the board. Uh, her opponent, James Satola, uh, I believe was recommended excellent across the board. He might have had one or two good uh, ratings as well. Um, we also have uh, a race for the 8th District Court of Appeals in which there's a very familiar ballot name uh, who happens to be related to one of the incumbent judges who's rated not recommended. And then there is a candidate who is, is quite excellent in that race as well. Uh, there are two candidates that are excellent. Both of them happen to be sitting judges in other courts, um, Kathleen Keough and then um, uh, Ronald Suster got excellent preferred by some of the bar associations and excellent. So people need to know what they're doing before they vote. Don't play the name game. When you play the name game, justice loses. Go to judgeforyourself.com. That's with the number four. It's hard to believe that we're, we're at the place that we're at here in 2010 where it's, it's really gotten this bad. There are big changes afoot in this county. Right. Uh, thank you so much for continuing to do this cycle after cycle, election cycle after election cycle. Thank you so much for right. taking time to talk. Look, look inside the egg carton before you buy. <laughs> That's a great thing. Right. Thanks. Thanks so much, Subo. Thank Thanks you. Thanks so much. All right. Thomas Mulready from CoolCleveland.com. Have a great week in Cool Cleveland. Go to Judge for You. 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 Has about a 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 judge for you.
to judge. Please. Go to judge. Please. Go to judge. Please. Go to judge. Taz about. Go to judge. Taz about. Go to judge. Taz about. Please. 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 Go to judge. Ta